right, good morning. Let's jump over to the other screen. We all right. I have too much fun with that transition. Hmm. Okay, so good morning. I think I already said that. Hopefully the audio levels are good. Seems like it maybe. Let's uh, let's get going. So uh, it's been a whole week since I've done a stream. The last stream was uh, while I was traveling. It's kind of hit or miss, but we got some stuff done. Uh, left some errors. Just a few. Um, it's interesting, actually. This is not showing one of the errors that I was seeing before. Um, okay, so we're just going to kind of work through this. Uh, what we were working on last time for Glowing Telegram was uh, this issue. So allow for multiple chain tasks uh, and ultimately being able to add our uploaded video to a playlist, right? So we have this like asynchronous background thing that, uh, well, in the background, uploads a video to YouTube. And then what I would like to do is have that video automatically added to a specific playlist on YouTube. Um, but to do that, but to do that, I, it, you can't do that as one operation. You have to make like two separate calls. You have to basically at least start the upload of the video and then you can, you have the like ID of the video and you, and you can then say, Hey, add, add this to this playlist. So there's like two separate things. Uh, and so the way that I'm going to make that work is we could like a completely different way of doing this than what I had planned on last week would be in the YouTube upload API. We could, uh, this is worth thinking about, right? So we let's, let's hide all this. We have a uh, YouTube upload request uh, struct that represents all the stuff we're, we're sending to the, this, this YouTube upload API um, microservice. Uh, the outliner is really helpful for this sort of thing. There we go. Uh, so we can look at upload here. And so upload uh, in fact, uploads the uh, the video, and yeah, so we could call upload enter, and then we look at was it a success or was it a temporary failure or a permanent failure? Uh, and this upload function is called from somewhere. It looks like up here. Here we go. Okay, so an upload video handler. There we go. So an upload video handler. This is this is the uh, API endpoint handler. So we, this is where we're getting the, the JSON body YouTube upload task payload. And we are uh, finding where the actual file is on disk. We're determining the content length of said file. We are just assuming right now it's hard coded that the content type is uh, video MP4. Uh, we are building out the request to the YouTube, the two the Google API, right? There we go. And uh, and then after that, we check to see if there was some kind of error. Uh, so right, right, right. So so the first part essentially uploads the metadata to uh, the Google API for YouTube, and then the second part gets the upload URL from that, and then does the upload. And then once the upload's done, we return uh, an OK, right? So one thing I could do here, and would be perfectly valid to do, uh, is 
in this API request also include, or rather, so in the, the, the payload sent to this handler, include the playlist that we want to add the video to. And then as part of this operation, maybe actually even before we start the upload, I think we don't even have to do the upload to add it to the playlist. Uh, the playlist. Um, we could like somewhere here, add this video that we're um, pre-creating, uh, creating that kind of the placeholder for until so we actually upload the contents. We could add that to the playlist. And so what are the implications of that, right? Um, if that goes wrong, like if that fails, then we essentially end up giving up on uploading the video. Where on the other hand, so let me take a step back. Uh, and, and I mean, there's more than two ways of doing it, but the two ways that you know, I'm thinking about right now. Hey, Brainless, good morning. How is your, your Sunday going? Um, so one way would just be to add the video to the playlist as part of this. And that kind of makes a lot of sense because we're, we're just sending a lot of metadata about the video here. Um, and the other way would be to go down the path that I was working on last Sunday where we're creating this chained task processing where um, we complete a task and we include in the request to, for the initial task to have follow on tasks. And that follow on task would be able to then do the adding of the video to the playlist. I don't know that that actually makes sense. And I, so that whole thing is, is going to be needed. I don't know if I want to do that for this though. So let me ponder that. But Brainless says doing well, a bit sick, but nothing too bad. Well, I'm glad. Uh, how's the trip going? The trip is over. <laughs> I have I have returned to my normal situation. Ah, uh, it's a good trip. Most mostly work stuff, just a, a little bit of sightseeing while I was away, but uh, yeah. Hmm. There's last of the coffee. So yes, I am back to my, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Back to my normal uh, PC and my four monitors and my my fancy blue, uh, blue Yeti microphone. Which apparently the microphone on my laptop is just as good. <laughs> I guess I'll have to go back and compare like what the audio actually sounds like uh, on the previous. Oh, that reminds me. Yes, still amazes you. That reminds me. I need to go get the uh, the local recording off of my laptop and put it on here. Okay. Well, anyway, maybe I'll remember to do that at some point. Probably when I get to when I finally catch up on processing <laughs> uh, things for YouTube since I'm months behind at this point. Uh, okay. I've been working with a single laptop monitor for years, so I used to swap tabs. Yeah, yeah. I, I had some experience recently going back to just working off of a single screen. I mean, <laughs> we saw that on the stream last week, but also for work stuff, and it's, uh, it's difficult. When you do as I do, where you have this this many tabs or more, and then multiple browser windows. It's hard to find stuff when you don't have multiple screens. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change up the plan here. So we we made some progress on this um, task worker queue stuff. I'm gonna put a pen in this. And we're going to approach this a different way. There's another item that I had identified in the project plan here, populate other metadata for created YouTube videos. So I think I'm going to piggyback off of, I'm going to move the playlist stuff over to there. Uh, wait, 
edit the, there we go. So this item is gonna be more of tasks can have additional uh, follow on tasks, something like that. So issue 76 will be about that. And then 48 is gonna be basically all this additional metadata. Like so. And so this is the one I'm going to start working on <laughs> soon. Uh, what I wanna do for this though, um, I do, there, there were some errors and I wanna fix those. Um, at least there was one, it's, it's interesting because it's not showing up here anymore, but there was one thing where it was complaining and I don't know why it stopped complaining about this, but I'm pretty sure this is still wrong. Um, because I did some research actually. <laughs> I was looking at the Rust programming language, uh, the Rust Lang book, right? And so this task type that I've created here, uh, wherever it is, so not task, task is fine, it's not recursive, but next task, next task is a recursive type, right? It contains itself. Um, and there was an error, I'm not sure why I'm not getting that error anymore. Maybe I need to like reload Rust Analyzer or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There, There is an issue here though, because apparently um, the size of the struct needs to be known at compile time, but the size of, of this as is, is essentially infinite, right? Because if next task, next task can contain another next task, Maybe, <laughs> but if it does, then that, um, you know, is a whole nother copy of all of this stuff, right? And that can go on forever. So that's not possible. Um, so the answer is use a box or something else. Uh, was <laughs> what some reading told me. Uh, so let's see. I think we can just get away with doing something like this. Now, now we need next task. Every, everywhere we are creating a task, unless I want to create a, uh, you know, I could, I could implement, I could do a thing so I could have a method that would build it for me, but that's fine. I'm just going to say next task is uh, none for now. For now. All right, that's that's essentially what this function is, right? So the idea is this function is, uh, uh, what are we trying to do here? Oh, I see. So we're taking some, some details. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this right here as is because this, this, this uh, error handily tells me exactly where I need to come back and fix things because like this function we'll need to take an optional thing about any additional tasks to do. Yes, and, and the same with all the rest of the stuff where we're, uh, argument is missing. It says this method takes two arguments, interesting the given amount. So why, how did this end up being wrong? Interesting. Okay. And then, yeah. Okay. So like I said, I'm, I'm going to pivot <laughs> and, uh, and uh, achieve the end that we were trying to get at a different way. All right. So this is interesting. I, I know some projects use these like annotations. First of all, I don't know if this is a chore. Maybe it is. I don't, I've never really used this kind of 
annotation thing on commit messages. But as of a few days ago, um, Copilot has started giving me suggestions in this format, and that's interesting. What is what is that called? Uh, get commit message um, annotation. Uh huh. Uh huh. Best practices for get commit message. Tags are the wrong thing to be Googling for. What is that? There's there's a practice though, where that's coming from. That kind of putting chore or whatever. Semantic. Thank you. Yes. Feet fix doc style refactor test chore. Conventional commits, that org. I don't really care about this um, because I don't really care about individual commit messages. <laughs> Um, in and of themselves generally, because I generally will squash pull requests. Yeah, you never got into naming commits. You do sometimes like that for branches. Yeah, yeah. If if you could summarize, if you could do that for like a whole pull request, so when you squash merge it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for branch names, definitely. Do they, uh, that kind of maps. Yeah, I, I have and still do do like feature and hotfix. So like git flow, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I guess that could map, right? Uh, yeah, got used to it now. Yep. So you could do like feature slash whatever, chore slash whatever, doc slash whatever, instead of everything. Like I feel like just now habitually, um, well, not here because I'm using um, like VS Code is creating branches for me because I'm working on issues. But typically when I, in, in other contexts, I will typically name a branch feature slash bleh. Um, but maybe, you know, docs and sure. What does the exclamation point mean? Draw attention to breaking changes? Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's not, um, even if you're squashing, if you're if you're squashing your PR in GitHub, your your summary message for the PR, right, is going to have all the commit messages in it. So there's is some utility, right, in having individual commits and having nice messages, in in that they end up in there. But uh, I'm not too too bothered. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna change some of this stuff. Uh, we don't need to do this at all now. Add new API to add video to playlist. Don't need to do that now. Um, add playlist ID to series table. I probably do want to do that, but not as part of this. Um, we are not adding a playlist add task. Uh, I do want to do this as part of UI work for the chaining tasks, but this part moves to a different ticket. So go back to the project. I'll edit this. There we go. And I had some free time to play Mind Over Magic and V Rising this past few, past few days. Nice. Oh. How are you liking V Rising? Is it? Had, is this, this that's something you played before, right? I mean, it's not new to you. <laughs> uh, but yeah. 
let's see. So I'm going to move this back. Still haven't gotten to the new content. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, series the stream, puppet series, high level API. I'm going to move this down a little bit. It's one of your favorite ones. Nice. Okay, and then we can move this over here. Uh, so, we're going to ditch working on this for now. One second. Check something really quick. Okay. And in Mind Over Magic, they just added brooms. So your your little guys can, can fly around now, I'm assuming. Not not just for sweeping. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so choose. I assume haven't researched them yet, have been avoiding looking at it. Fair, fair. Yeah. I'm I'm still uh, I'm still avoiding a lot of spoilers for like Rimworld's uh, the anomaly DLC. Um, for the most part, like I've not seen the end, which like I've seen the ends for, even though I've never beaten the game, I've seen the ends for the, all the other ones. Uh, I don't know why it's different this time, but I guess <laughs> because I'm actually playing it on stream now, uh, maybe. All right. So we're, we're going to work on 48. Okay. So the um, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Not working on task worker. That's that's what. Uh, YouTube upload API. There we go. So the uh, the language part should be easy, right? So we have a. A place here. Would you dislike if I vote for Mind Over Magic? Hey, I'm what whatever you, you want to suggest. Um, we can. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Are you? Would it be okay if I I picked up where I left off? I'm not sure that I'm very far in that it would matter all that much for a restart, but we did make some progress. Nor do I feel like the start last time was so bad <laughs> uh, that a, a restart would be justified. Yeah, they haven't break the old good, good, good. That, that was the other thing I was just thinking about. All right, um, so snippet. So right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and I'm just gonna hard code default language to Fault language Ian. Maybe maybe that's even the the right <laughs> uh, uh, code. Do we have um, docs? Here we go. Snippet. Uh, someday I'll be uploading thumbnails. Maybe. Um, we're just not there yet. Default language. The language of the video title and snippet description. Okay, language, but it doesn't say, uh, is LA for locale? What do you mean? Hmm. Yeah, maybe E in US. I mean, yeah, to be fair, to be fair, in the drop down, yeah, I can show this. Um, like when you look at the list of languages. Uh, why do I why why do I care about setting this by the way? <laughs> well, you don't get auto caption options um on the video unless you tell it what the video language is. Um, and so I 
there are a bunch of English options. So yeah, probably E in US is what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to guess that's right in the absence of anything telling me that's wrong. Uh, let's see. What if I search for Egan here? Nope. Uh, here we go. BCP 47. Tags for identifying languages. I'm just going to assume that this is right and we're going to move on. Uh, okay. So that's, that's that part. Check. Uh, recording date, recording details, that recording date. Also, oh, oh, I told that I was going to send content details and then I didn't send content details. <laughs> oh, fancy, fancy. Um, we're not going to send any of that. I just want recording date. Yeah. Uh, do we know the format of recording date? It's a date time. ISO 8601. Good. Uh, how are we getting recording date? I have some options, right? I could pass it in. I'm gonna have to change the, the task payload anyway. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's do that that way. So we'll do recording date. Uh, let's do let's see how do I want to do this uh, I am so annoyed with the date formats we have some endpoints which return colon zero zero Z for UTC others yeah those are equivalent <laughs> yep Th those well, colon zero zero is just the, the seconds. And then, yeah, zero zero plus zero zero. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's more than one way to say the same thing. Yes. Um, I mean, there's nothing saying, well, I could probably check the spec because it's behind me on my desk. But I feel like, especially if like you're in control of both both sides of this, then you could say, hey, everyone should just use UTC and use the Z. Um, but yeah, what I'm trying to think of is, do I want to say here that this is a string? and like defer ensuring validity, validity of this to upstream? I think I do because, so this is the task payload. So this is coming from the, the queue, um, not the API, right? Because that's, that's this part. Then the other question is, Wait, how am I doing this elsewhere? Am I using like ISO 8601? Duration, something, something. Yeah, I think so. Daytime. Hmm. What if I just did this actually? And then uh, playlist ID. Yeah, something like that. 
And then, hey, guess what? <laughs> That's uh, exactly the same stuff here. All right, now, they're both ISO 8601, but it's like, come on, keep one, right, right. I mean, I guess, again, if you control both sides of it, right, then you can just say, oh, we're implementing a subset of the standard, right? And then if you, if you can agree to that, then you can just simplify parsing, assuming you don't have common parsing, because if you did, then it wouldn't really matter, right? It would just all work itself out. Okay, so um this this part should be easy right because we just need to copy the record date did i oh uh, yeah let's do recording date to be consistent yeah the issue is different microservices different languages different teams yes i mean that is ultimately like what i'm doing here with having all these different services at the scale that i'm at with one person working on it is kind of silly <laughs> I'm just doing it um, to do it and to get a feel of what that would be like to do a bunch of different microservices for uh, other use cases. Uh, but yeah, like one of the big appeals of doing kind of that microservice kind of approach is that if you have different teams working in different languages, you know, it's, it's much easier to, um, say, okay, well, we'll use the network as our interface. Okay. Reporting date and playlist ID. Let me just copy those in. And then it all just works, except that it doesn't do anything yet. But in terms of this service, we can get the data all the way into, um, are we not using this? Hmm. Is that why? Hold on. Don't I use this in the Twitch API? Hold on. The tangent. <laughs> I've noticed that sometimes that um, my like uploads fail. Like it'll do one or two, and then it fails. I think it's because we're not handling the refresh token stuff in here, like we are on Twitch on the Twitch API. Uh, so in from request parts. So when we get the request, do we, are we not implementing? We are. Okay, so what's the difference here? Why is my copy paste not <laughs> consistent? Um, okay, so Twitch API on the right. We're saying uh, we're getting the access token. If we get the access token, we get the access token. Uh, otherwise, we attempt to refresh the token. Okay. Why, why do we not just have this over here too? It's the same API, right? Oh, you know why? It's because this is not copy paste, right? This is, this is, uh, Copilot <laughs> regenerating this and not, you know, taking all of the logic. That's why. I assume. All right, bug fixed, maybe. Um, okay. Match, update, refresh token, await, result. Um, wait, this, this returns a result. So the other one must not. It returns an option. I see. Uh, really result makes more sense. So this is like, okay.
All right, I have to save. <laughs> this is not this is not my usual TypeScript experience where I get immediate feedback as soon as I pause typing for a second. I have to save out for Rust Analyzer to update. Okay. So that should fix the issue uh, that I was seeing before where uh, a couple of uploads worked and then by the time, because it currently locally in, in Docker, wherever Docker is, there we go. Huh, multi-platform image support with container D is here. Okay, cool. Um, I have two instances of the task worker running task worker two and task worker one. So I'm, I'm able to do like two tasks simultaneously the way they have set up because the task worker just like does one task at a time um, synchronously, but I can scale it up to have as many workers as I, I want running because that seemed, that seemed like a good way to go about it at the time. Uh, I think that still makes sense, but um, so it'll like upload two videos simultaneously to, to YouTube the way that it's set up right now. Um, so when it finishes one and it starts the third video, maybe that current auth token that we're getting from Redis, the access token, uh, has expired and needs, we need to do, use the refresh token to get a, a fresh one. Um, so uh, we weren't doing that before <laughs> and so it would fail and, and that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So anyway, um, the thing that I needed to do, all right, right, right. So we have, we're, we're going to, we're saying now that the API is going to have in body the recording date. So we don't need to do this anymore. We can just do this. So this uh, date time holds a date and a time. If I do to string on it, what happens? If I recall correctly, this crate really only handles parsing. Um, so if I want to generate an ISO 8601 uh, date time from the value, How do I do that? Ooh, sorry. Date, time, date time, serialize, self to string, So I think this is telling me that this is going to, like if I try to serialize, hmm. Okay, maybe this will just work. I guess I'll find out when I try to upload a video. <laughs> Since I, uh, I'm, I guess we could write tests, huh? Uh, let's see, that might be worthwhile. Uh, yeah.
Okay, so uh, we create the task request with recording data and playlist ID, and then down here in upload video handler, we're reading that. If if we have it, we transform it into a string. Um, and what else were we doing? Uh, let's see. Back to the plan. Okay, so that should be recording date. Uh, and then we need the playlist ID, and we need to do something with it, right? So if if we if we don't fail here, we should add this video. If the uh, body contains a uh, playlist ID, add the video to the playlist. Copilot is thinking. All right, so if let sum playlist ID equals body dot playlist ID, okay. It's very compact, right? <laughs> we we can assign we can assign a value to playlist ID if the option body dot playlist ID has a value. If, if there is something there and not none, and then we execute the body of the <laughs> of the of the statement. Uh, let video ID equals match response headers get location and then some video ID video ID not found. I'm not sure that this is correct. I have to look at the docs. Uh, let URL format snippet key. Um, this is also kind of sus to me. I'm not sure that that's true. That's, that's correct. Uh, response, match state, uh, post with headers. Sure. Playlist ID, resource kind. Yeah, I think, I think this looks right to me. Um, and then we do like check response, error handling. We check to see... Like, so this is like, uh, if we get, um, like we can't connect to Google API, right? This is that kind of error. And then if we get a non 200 response, then this is that kind of error. Uh, so I'll take, what's the other one? Huh? Nope. Well, I'll take this one. Okay, so the first thing that we should look at is the API that we're calling right now, which is the um, YouTube V3 videos API. What is the response that we get back in that? Video, uh, what did I say? <laughs> Just videos? Is that insert? Yeah. Okay, what does the response look like? It returns a video response in the response body. So it doesn't say anything about returning a header. Yeah, response to the ID. Response. Call. ID. Okay. So let's take out that and let's uh, try to parse response JSON. Okay. Match uh, response that JSON. Okay. If we can get the ID, otherwise stuff. Is this response does not live long enough? Yep, that makes sense. Um. 
Is this just like um, a shadowing thing? No. Why? Jason. Sure. Await value. Hmm. Okay, response does not live long enough. Borrowed value does not live long enough. <laughs> Click here for full compiler diagnostic. Actually, these are surprisingly helpful because that, that it shows you actually what you get from the Rust compiler, uh, which is pretty helpful, right? So, so we're getting response ID as str, and we are taking something from it and putting in video ID, and then response goes away. So it doesn't live long enough. Right, so what we need to do is like clone a video ID here. No. <laughs> I thought that would fix it. Response dropped here was still borrowed. On line 280, 13, yeah, here. Okay, interesting. Turns a copy of the value. So I would think that if we're copying the video ID, then the thing that's escaping this no longer refers to that. But apparently I'm wrong. Borrowed value does not live long enough. Binding response declared here. A response dropped here while still borrowed. Huh. Hmm. You know what can be fun? Have Copilot try to explain this. block response.json await oh, consumes response and then you try to use response again later in the function. Do I? Do I though? Without seeing the specific code that's causing it, it's right here. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. I'm not trying to return a reference to, to a value response to. Yeah. 
What is, what is, so response sub, sub ID, expected enum, survey JSON value. Are there other, yeah, as str get, Take as number as object as str. So it's got to be as str. And I feel like this is something I've done elsewhere. <laughs> Somewhere else. I'm just not sure. What if, what if I remove this? Can I infer type of the type parameter T declared in the method JSON must be known to this point? Sure. idea here is we're getting the JSON. We're saying it is some bag of JSON <laughs> rather than giving it like a, a struct or something where we're defining exactly what's uh, the shape of it. Just because I don't want to have to define the struct. Um, I could. I don't think that's going to change anything though. And then this is this is a asynchronous thing, right? Um, Right, dot JSON and then await. So that gets us something, right? That's uh, maybe <laughs> a, J, uh, a survey JSON value, right? And so we say, um, wait, is this an option or a result? It's a result, okay. So then let's say, okay. Um, um, And then I say, try to grab ID out of it. It's a value, go to value. Huh, could I just match, instead of doing this, can I just say string? Consider, okay, so now we have a more helpful error message. So string video ID data moved here. Move occurs because video ID has type std string string, which does not implement the copy trait. Considering borrowing here for the match. Okay, and now we get the same error again. <laughs> um, can we can we clone this? Yes. Let's have a slightly less weird name for this. I mean, it only lives in the scope of this anyway, so it doesn't have to make sense globally. It just needs to make sense in the context of this. Okay. Um, so we're throwing some tracing stuff on here. We're returning an error. Uh, I think that's all good. Yes. Okay, so that, that, that gets us the playlist ID. Uh, this part I think is probably also wrong, but I'm gonna take a break right here. I'll be back in just a few minutes uh, and we'll fix the rest of this code. BRB.